the gasoline has run out. It's SHTF. The chainsaw is busted. This is all we got. We gotta make it work. Let's see what we can do. This looks like spruce. Compared to a chainsaw, it's undoubtedly very slow. Nice cut. Just a reminder, always wear headgear, ear protection, protective eyewear, chaps, maybe even steel toed boots. I'm wearing it right now, it's just invisible. It's a new transparent type of personal protective equipment. Just hit the market, that's part of the review in this video. And in fact, if you go down in the link in the description, which is also invisible, you can get yourself some. Okay, so today we have two of the best saws in the world. We have the steel. We have the steel. Steel is pronounced steel. 462 MSC, and we have the Silky Katana Boy 1000. An analog handsaw versus a combustion engine chainsaw. Now, my predictions for this test is gonna be that the still steel is gonna completely blow away the Katana Boy in terms of speed of cut and ease of cut. There's gonna be no competition. In fact, I don't even know if this is a fair comparison because most people are not gonna have a still. Steel! Okay, at least not this model, which is as powerful as it is. This, I believe, is a 72cc chainsaw. So it's up there amongst the most powerful chainsaws in the world, you can go much higher than this, but in terms of what the average guy is gonna have, that's probably gonna be the higher end of that. Now, why do you need saws in an SHTF situation? Well, in most places in North America, you're gonna need some form of heating after a grid down situation. And because the natural gas presumably is not gonna be blowing, uh, that means that you're gonna have to rely on the next best thing, which of course is going to be a wood stove or some way to combust firewood and convert it into heat. So that's why we need saws. Not only that, you can build a lot of different structures when you have saws. You can clear land amongst other things. So those are the reasons why in an apocalypse type scenario, you're gonna need some kind of thing that allows you to cut wood. <laughs> That's the ideal scenario. So that's what I was talking about. If you have that cantilever opposing force using gravity, you can cut really fast. The other advantage of a pull saw is you don't have to apply downward force. For a buck saw, if you want to maximize the speed of your cut, you have to apply a little bit of downward force, which of course requires energy. With a pull saw, all you're doing is pulling it. These teeth naturally trench in as they're pulling across the wood. You're only actually cutting on the pull movement. You're, when you push, there's no cutting happening. Get that saw hot. <laughs> All right, you can see that is very hard wood. I'm not sure how well seasoned this wood actually is. There's a bit of moisture in there, which is uh, not good as far as firewood goes. You can see the difference between that one and this one. This one looks a lot more moist than this one. 
So if you're bucking wood, this is probably going to be an exceptional size for firewood. This is definitely good lumber. This is a softer wood, so in terms of building materials, it's not gonna be that great. But if you're doing some sort of post-collapse milling operation, you know, having something like this as a backup, I know it seems slow compared to the chainsaw, and it is. Like I said, it's Tesla Model S Plaid versus a donkey. And we're of course comparing it to what is literally one of the best saws on the market so keep that in mind most chainsaws are probably not going to be able to take this log out that quickly but that one has a lot of power and the chainsaw is also about twice the cost of this so that's something to keep in mind and these teeth are still razor sharp because they're impulse hardened these things don't dull okay katana boys 1000 here we go Well, so drier wood performed a lot better. Here we go. This Japanese made Katana Boy 1000 is the world's largest folding handsaw. So it has very large teeth, a small amount of teeth per inch, which isn't necessarily a good thing when you're contesting against hardwoods. Mind you, in most conditions, this is still gonna perform just fine. It has impulse hardened teeth. It's a high carbon steel, and I believe it's nickel plated as well to give it extra longevity and durability. I've never had to sharpen a silky saw and I've been using them for almost 15 years. It has a double handed handle and it is very sharp so you gotta be careful. Some people prefer old fashioned buck saws. Uh, the benefits of a buck saw is that you can get them in much larger configurations and you can get a variety of different teeth. The blades are a lot cheaper and just generally all around uh, they tend to be a little bit cheaper than something like this. But when you get up to those competition grade buck saws, they can still be pretty pricey. They require oiling, they require a lot of skill, and they're not nearly as versatile as something like this. For example, I can go into the woods right now and I can just take this and I can start cutting down a tree from almost any angle. I can cut it like this, I can cut low. You can cut in a lot of different places because it's just one straight line and you can reach higher branches. That's the other advantage over a chainsaw where it's heavier, it's a, you know, the center of gravity is a bit closer to your body but you're not gonna be able to reach as far. You don't wanna be, you know, doing crazy stuff with this because again, it's a safety hazard. So that's something to keep in mind. In terms of the weight, this is much lighter. It's a bit more of a distributed weight, whereas this is a smaller weight. You can get chainsaws that don't weigh this much. They're not gonna be as capable, obviously. It should be noted that in a bug out scenario, a man powered pull saw is preferable as they're lighter weight, easy to pack, and they don't make any noise. Chainsaws are great for homesteading, but not when you need to evacuate on foot. You can get these in all different types of sizes. Much like a chainsaw, there's different size bars, as they would say with, in chainsaw speak. In this, you just say it's a different size blade. You can get replacement blades that just attach to the handle here. So the handle is probably gonna be the last thing to break. If anything breaks, it might be a few teeth on the blade after a thousand uses. Generally speaking, this is a very robust, durable saw. It's most definitely the king of folding pull saws. There's no doubt about that. Now, personally, I would recommend having both. Ideally, you're using this for your everyday homestead use or something like this as a backup just in case. A couple drops of gasoline did that. I will say it's not as smooth of a cut as the Silky. So this is the cut smoothness of the Katana Boy. This is the cut smoothness of the chainsaw. The Katana Boy is a much nicer cut, not that that matters when you're trying to just cut firewood really fast, but it's worth noting uh, if you ever wanted to do 
like carpentry or anything. The benefits of a combustion engine chainsaw are primarily speed and power. And in some cases, I would say they're slightly more wieldy, but not all. That is your main benefit, but there's a lot of drawbacks that a lot of people don't think about. Number one, the sound. These are incredibly loud. I'm not gonna be using earmuffs in my demonstration today because I'm not gonna be doing a lot of cuts. It runs on non-renewable energy. In an SHTF situation, you're only gonna be able to store so much 50 to one fuel, that's 50 parts gasoline, one part oil. You're only gonna be able to store so much of that. And while it's true that just one tank of this could probably process a crap load of firewood and is gonna do what this is gonna take you a lot of calories in order to achieve, it is non-renewable. Now you can get electric chainsaws. Unfortunately, they're not yet to the point where they can rival a gas powered chainsaw in terms of power. Something like this, you're also gonna to have to worry about maintenance. So there's a lot of things that need lubrication. There's a lot of moving parts and components that may not be accessible after shit hits the fan. In having used both of these saws, hands down, the chainsaw destroys the silky. One reason I think why I've always intuitively been reluctant to gravitate towards tools like this is as great as they perform, they make you weak, they make you soft, they make you lazy. Something like this, it forces you to be more fit, it forces you to just be more aware of your surroundings. Something like this, from a sensory, overload point of view it's overwhelming while this might sound like i'm romanticizing bushcraft in a way there's something to be said about the wood that you cut with something like this are you going to value it as much when you have to do that same thing by hand because i think what's happened in this era of conspicuous consumption is things come so easy because we have an unlimited supply of petrol. But when the gas trucks stop rolling, if you're in that mentality where you want everything to come easy and you're relying on technology to do the brunt of the work, you're likely going to get a very hard stop reality check. I'm just realizing how soft I've been getting just using technology on the farm from my former bushcraft self who would come out here and cut this wood no problem. There is something to be said about just the connection that you have with an analog tool to your environment as opposed to just using some machine. And I always used to laugh at the ATV guys because when you're on an ATV and you're barreling through the forest, I could be sitting like 10 meters from the road. I could be doing a dance, I could be doing handstands, I could be doing jumping jacks. These guys would not see me because all you see is what's right in front of you. So technology creates that tunnel vision. A part of me thinks that people who are trying to keep this technology and the guys who are gonna get on the video and be like, yeah, you know, chainsaw is the way to go, obviously. If you're keeping that mentality, I think it's, it's a reckless mindset to be in because of course there's not gonna be a gas station to go to. There's not gonna be endless amounts of bar and chain oil. Keep one of these in your arsenal. Have one of these, but have something, something analog because when this breaks down, which it eventually will, and there's gonna come a point when you're probably not gonna wanna use it because it's way too damn loud. Get a saw. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.